Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the opening of the Green Impact Summit. My name is Nick Horton. I'll be your host today. I'm the CEO of Think Legal Tech. Today's the first day, as I just mentioned, of Green Impact Summit. This is uh, part of Green Impact Week. And today we'll have a series of panels today discussing the issue. Now, uh, something I just really practical is that for those of you that are watching online, uh, we'd love to hear what you think. We'd love to hear your questions. We'd love to hear your feedback. And the way to do that is go on our chat at greenimpact.io. That's greenimpact.io. And um, send us your questions, send us your comments. I'll try to get those and incorporate them. If I don't get your comment or your question in, go ahead and complain on the chat, repeat it, and uh, somebody here will make me aware of that. Well, to kick us off, we've got a lot to get through today. To kick us off, I'd like to ask uh, Rasmus Schumann and Anna Katrina to join me on stage to here. Now, um, Rasmus Channing from Creative Business Network and uh, Anna Katrina from DC and uh, Human Chujay from Sustainery. You are the key partners in, um, why don't you, come on, we'll just pull you, the three of you over here, get a little closer. You're the key partners of this? Cool, well, let's see, we're starting with, uh, let's, let's start with Rasmus, just to mix things up. Boom. Boom. Why? Are Why are we part of this? this? At Creative Business Network, we work with startups from the culture and creative industries in some 80 countries. And uh, we do that because we know that creative people, uh, so cre people, people with a creative background or an uh, artistic background, uh, often have great solutions to many of the challenges that society is facing. And, uh, but they often lack the business skills or the technical skills. And that's why pairing up you know, the, the, the optimal team you know, is someone with business skills, creative skills, and also with technical skills. As you could see, when, when some of the big uh, tech companies were founded, that was the kind of makeup that we saw like look at Apple, Jonathan Ive, and Wozniak, and then uh, Jobs. So I think uh, that is, uh, that's what we're trying to do at Creative Business Network, to bring uh, the artistic and creative skills into uh, the forefront of, of uh, solutions to challenges of the world, but also really small stuff. I mean, it's also about uh, fashion and music and movies and, and the stuff that surrounds us and that identifies us. It's a part of who you are, who I, who I am, uh, the, the creative industries can actually help us build identity, build meaning in our lives uh, in many ways. So in, in that way, they, they, have a, they have a great uh, task to fulfill, so, so to speak. And um, we have actually not focused that much on sustainability, but we always had startups that did. We always, if we did a call for, for startups in, in this field, uh, we would, we would uh, or in creative industries, we would always get uh, startups that were already in 2013, our second year, we would have Italian startup working on uh, orange fiber, like orange pulp and making that into textiles. Uh, we would have uh, usually like about a quarter of all the startups had some kind of sustainability angle into the, the creative industries. And now in 2021, the UN has declared that that will be the year of the creative economy for sustainable development. So how can artists and creatives uh, do the last part of a sustainable development? When I say the last part, it's getting the populations, the citizens to move in the right direction because we know what the scientists say and we know what the economists say and the politicians has also gotten it more or less, maybe with a few exceptions in the US. Um, so, so now it's really for all of us to make a change. And, uh, and that we might have to look for either smart solutions that will nudge us in a certain direction because of a color or, a, a, you know, at, at the Copenhagen Central Station, they use uh, classical music to scare away some people at, in certain areas. So you can, really, you can really use these tools in a way to nudge behavior in the right direction. And that's why we think it's important to, to, to bring in the, the creative industries uh, because they are in many ways avant-garde, they're, if you look up to, uh, the, the more green Billie Eilish can get, the better. Uh, not her hair necessarily, but her behavior. And, and then get all the teens that follow her and, and admire her to do the same behavior, then we're really going to have a better world. Super. <laughs> Anna Cassina. Yeah, we joined up because we are, you can say, welcome to volume. I would actually like, like to start there. We are in an old uh, tram depot that we have been running for the past almost 12 years. Uh, and we do a lot of events, also cultural events, but have a very um, 
focused on the social impact and sustainability from a small NGO and startup side. And I completely agree with the creativity that needs to be uh, more or less the next step and also uh, a communication, the way of communicating that all of us need to take part in this uh, sustainable transition as well. Uh, so we work here at this space also to create a, a forum for uh, social innovation and sustainable uh, agenda in general. We have a co-working community just right next door where we have a lot of uh, young uh, new entrepreneurs, small NGOs working on this agenda. Uh, and we see that the creativity, social impact and also the green transition take involved in that as well is very important for us to find new solution and actually to create some action because it's also about action. Uh, and it's also about thinking holistically. So that is why we have joined this partnership as well. So we make sure that we can gather a lot of the good new ideas and make sure that a new impact is actually created as well. Because it is down here where the impact actually happens. I mean, you say well, it's funny, you're in cre creativity and social. I had brunch on Sunday at a restaurant, so creative, cooks, and the food was very creative. And the waiters were, um, were former inmates, prison inmates, yeah. who were serving the food. And, you know, we well, all want How often do you go to a restaurant because you're hungry? Rarely, exactly. right? You go there to get entertained. Exactly, and, and at the same time, these inmates, you know, well, you know, everybody wants them to integrate, but nobody necessarily wants them next door, living as neighbors or as, and here was an example of a great restaurant. These guys did great service. Human, the sustainable bit, the oranges turned into <laughs> fashion textiles. Yeah. yeah, a super dirty business that has an enormous footprint, not particularly sustainable. Why are you guys involved and how are you well, involved we, in change? Well, we created sustainability for two and a half years ago because we wanted to become the green transition acceleration pro, uh, platform and identify the solutions that are already there or solutions on the way to the market and help creating awareness and help in partnership with other partners such as research, uh, cities, public sectors and companies, accelerate those solutions to be able to be implemented. That is our core business. That's what we do. And one of the major um, obstacles is, is getting people together, uh, is getting people talk across silos. And this is one of the things that we really are focused on. So we work a lot with um, ecosystem uh, development and acceleration to help startups get connected with the companies and companies get connected with the research. Uh, and not only in the same area, a field of expertise. Um, and, and I believe that, that exactly this setup uh, is, is a really, really great showcase of how we ourselves, upon ourselves, can form partnership across different sectors. Of course, we have some things that are in common, but we also are focusing on different things. Uh, but also bring our own, you know, each, each other's community into the picture and let them meet. And, and when we stand here together, you have to, you have to kind of almost imagine the, the, the line of communities that are behind us and they come together as well. And this is what we're going to do with the Green Impact Week. Cool. And I was going to say, this is perfect that we're here in the house that you guys run. That it is, it is the physical and the online. It's the people sitting out here and, the, and it's bringing it all together. These thousands, hundreds, good grief, how many silos are there? And connecting them left and right. It's also given how I've been here bunches of times to all sorts of events. It's insane that we just met each other the other day for the first time. But this um, examples of cross-collaboration. When I was thinking, um, with this green transition and making it go faster, a couple of examples of how breaking the silos and connecting. Yeah, I can start with that. Uh, no. We have been working with the, with the new ideas and the new entrepreneurs, small NGOs, for a long time. And uh, definitely, since the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, it, it made it much more easier to kind of preach this agenda. And we see more and more startups starting uh, with ideas. Uh, and what they need is ecosystems around them. They re need the right network. So yeah. we are on a journey now to, to uh, gather local networks and the ecosystem around these kind of entrepreneurs uh, throughout Denmark. 
we very much believe in, uh, in local communities and uh, where, you, where you gather the public, the private sector, investors, uh, NGOs, the municipalities around these new ideas to make sure that they thrive, that there is the right framework and that they meet each other. Because a lot of this is also uh, needs to get inspired, knowledge sharing as well. Um, and uh, yeah, to make their ideas grow and their businesses grow, grow as well. Right, I mean, it is super difficult. I remember meeting one of your companies, I think it was the, uh, the woman turning apple waste into a leather alternative. And I remember the first time I met yeah. her, I thought, what on earth is she doing? And um, boom, but through network, she's met investors, she's met partners, and it is on this long step to being something that could be a big product. Yeah. So from a crazy idea too, it takes a lot of nurturing. I was thinking, uh, Rasmus, some of your experiences with taking, let's see, you know, the oranges is one example. I mean, an example maybe of, of where we brought different communities yeah. together to make this I'd like to give grow. two examples also from my past life. I was in, I've been 18 years uh, associated with Roskilde Festival on their payroll. And at some point I was head of marketing and uh, sponsorships and we did a whole green transition already in 1996 with the Roskilde Festival. We had the commissioner for the environment, Rick Biago, as a guest yeah, uh, at the festival and, and we talked about how difficult it is to get rid of it's easy to get rid of one ton of uh, food oil when it's mixed up with food but when you have one ton of food oil like that you know where do you where do you take it you know what do you do with it and, and that was really a, a challenge back in 1996. Uh, if we move forward um, to um, well first of all the creative industries are full of silos. Let me just say that. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. The, the, the music industry, or let's like, say the, the movie industry is, is against the gaming industry, is against the whatever. But yeah. um, then moving forward to uh, today, uh, there are some of these creative industries that pollute more than others. Tourism, uh, for example. So we have an initiative called CAST, which is Accelerators on Sustainable Tourism. And we actually have um, um, a session here this afternoon. Uh, I can't remember if it was at four or five o'clock or three. It is at three o'clock this afternoon. We have a session on sustainable tour tourism, which is uh, um, something we expect a lot from. It's an EU project that we run for several years. It will also continue next year. Um, so, so in that field, we, we have already seen examples of, of, of sustainable tourism. Stay at home is one, but that's not realistic. Uh, then um, also in, uh, in fashion, uh, we have over the years at Orange Fiber, we've also seen 17 Israel Alga Life with uh, algae seaweed making fiber, winning the H&M Sustainability Award after winning our award. And then in, uh, in 2016, we had Carcel win our, our, um, our Danish finals and go to the global finals. Carcel is a Danish um, company that works with alpaca wool. Uh, and have uh, women inmates, women in prisons in Peru, knit that uh, alpaca wool into luxury products that they sell and the uh, proceeds goes to the kids of these, uh, of these women. And uh, speaking of the Danish finals, we have tomorrow on, on this stage, we have the Danish finals of, so Creative Business Cup Denmark takes place at, from four to five on this stage. Um, and right now in some 75 countries around the world, they're preparing for the Creative Business Cup Russia, Creative Business Cup, uh, Kosovo, uh, even, uh, and, um, uh, and, and the price is to win a trip to Denmark, actually, uh, and to be part of the global finals next summer. Cool. Human. Where should I start? Exactly. Where do we start? Well, I, mean, I love that you know, this has started in, uh, in Denmark and is also in South America, from Denmark, yeah, yeah, Europe, yeah. South America. When, when we started, we, 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 re, we, we knew from the beginning that, that the challenges that we are facing is not, they are not local. And the, therefore, the solutions and the, uh, and, and, and the path through, through the, that, that solution should also be international. So we decided to, 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 to start global from the beginning. And we were lucky to have a lot of good friends around the world who also liked the idea. So we have uh, had SDG Tech Awards uh, in Brazil. Uh, we have projects in Brazil. We have uh, projects in uh, Southern Europe um, with uh, Portugal and Spain. And we already are connecting uh, these solutions and these solution makers in our digital hub where we have more than 1,000 uh, solution solutions and more than 2,000 solution makers. And, and by just connecting them is 
some things is moving on and people are, are, are reaching out and I want to do this and uh, you know, I think this would be really, really good if we could do it in India or whatever that is. Um, that's of course one of, the, one of the things. One of the other um, um, examples of the big projects that we are running is uh, we are actually uh, running a project to help innovate on solutions towards the COVID-19. And this project is, is about how to not only protect the vulnerable group uh, in a community, but also how to uh, make sure there's a certain life standard for this group. And, and doing this, well, a lot of people are doing these things. But what is unique about this project is that we are collaborating with Siemens Gamesa, which is a German company, and uh, ba basically they are Spanish, German, and global, but headquarters in S Spain, and with the city of Aarhus. So we bring those together and the community together, and then the staff from Siemens Gamesa worldwide are actually taking part in it, understanding the challenges that we are facing, the elder group is, is facing in that community, and try to solve these, and then compare it with the challenges that they are facing in, uh, in Spain uh, and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So I think it, this, is just, you know, this is just an example, and, and, and we are a very young company, we have done um, the largest uh, sustainability tour in Europe, gathering more than 250 startups who were ready to expand to different markets, uh, especially emerging markets. Uh, and we did that in, in collaboration with the UK government, where they, we have already examples of uh, startups and small, um, medium-sized companies who have used that connection to open the doors to markets they would not have access to. So because this is a lot of our work in these uh, you know, in the, the different silos that you guys are bringing together under this is uh, there's a couple of key qu the, there's a line that the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. No. Uh, and then so I mean, that's one thing is you know, the, the ideas are already there. And then there's also the bringing the people together. I mean, there's, you know, we're all glad that Mr. Lennon, you know, Paul, Len <laughs> Paul McCartney and uh, John Lennon met each other. <laughs> Hennessy Maurits. You know, there are lots of these. Bang and uh, Olufsen. Bang and Olufsen, <laughs> yeah. right? There's an awful lot of these, you know. It, most companies that have an acronym name have got several people that came together, right? Price, Waterhouse, some Beispiel. So, I mean, this is a common thing. So, this is a, you know, an established way of bringing business and an established way of creating growth. This is a new area for it. Yeah, and so I was going, how did you guys meet and figure out that this was something you guys needed to do together? I think we already uh, we met already uh, we met You've many noticed. times and we and we had already planned to do our uh, co uh, collaboration in the spring, but on the 23rd of March, I think it was. Yeah, I see a time. Some, something came um, came. Um, I don't know what <laughs> it was uh, that kind of disrupted our event there. Um, but I think uh, on one hand we have to um, we had to build our communities, we had to build our our place, uh, and then also. Um, you know, when you've mentioned the H&M and Bang & Olsen and every, uh, et cetera, I think it's also a lot about approaching partnerships with humility that, uh, and, and, and doubt, actually. I'm, I think I'm driven by self-doubt because that actually spurs you on to, to do better. And you can only do better if you do it with other people. Um, you can only uh, really excel if you find people that complement you and that can uh, challenge you in your views of the world and where you're going. Yeah. yeah, that's good said. And I think actually human was the one bringing us together, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also been talking for a long time. We have a lot of uh, common fields, like common things of working, and still we are very different in our what we do. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think actually human had a, a big deal in that, yeah. like seeing this uh, three-part uh, <coughs> partnership as well. Um, and also because uh, both of you are working very globally, actually I think that's also part of it. We have a very uh, national focus, very local focus, which we think is important as well. Even though that it needs to be big, it needs to be scaled and repeated what works, but still there is something about thinking globally but acting locally that we also need to take into reconsideration. And because that is, there is a thing there, right? Is that the three of you all have Danish passports, we're in Copenhagen. And um, yeah. there is something actually, there is something special about the place that we are right now, which is that with this national thing, it is, I've seen it over and over and over again, it's a fantastic test bed for ideas that can scale globally.
and there is also very much focus uh, on the Nordics, for example, but very much uh, where Copenhagen is the Danish part, more or less, you could say. So we have, we have a country where there is uh, a lot of opportunities and ideas that not uh, always is nurtured the same way and doesn't have the same visibility. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's also a country with a lack of sense of urgency. Yeah. I, I don't see, if you, if you go on and see some of our, uh, like Chioma Okbut Inkpa from Red Button in Nigeria, when she speaks about how she built her business and her uh, energy and enthusiasm and the urgency in finding solutions is completely different than uh, what we see here. Um, we might see it a bit more among the uh, Icelandics because they've been, they hit rock bottom a couple of times, but I, I think uh, uh, there is uh, a lack of, of, of getting up early and polishing your shoes and getting stuff done, like Aretha Franklin used to sing. You get up out of bed and you put on your clothes because you've got bills to pay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now this, <laughs> exactly. It's a um, very comfortable place to live. But and this is a discussion we'll be taking up here in a minute when we go into our uh, next panel, because we're going to talk about the Nordic ecosystem and the differences between the countries, the strengths and the weaknesses. The Swedish arrogance. Yeah, exactly. All the Swedes <laughs> and the Norwegians have got so much money. But um, and th now there are some really fun differences between them all three. Human. Now, you know, you also, I mean, you're a Dane, but you didn't start out as a Dane. And I was wondering this, uh, you, you, and lo and behold, this Brazil. But he started happened. out as a human. He <laughs> did, he started out and will forever be a human. And from Persia to Copenhagen to Brazil with a trip to Africa in between. If you could put some last words on this collaboration and why. Well, I always have admired why, what Rasmus has been doing for many years. Uh, when I was yeah. back then, when I was in Venture Cup and, and uh, I uh, tried to kind of uh, convince him a couple of times. He was not uh, really ready for that at that time. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. And, and I've been working with Anna-Katrina and I've been admiring her work with the social pact. So when the opportunity came and there was, there's a story, there's a story behind it because we were supposed to run the City Tech Awards. Which, uh, and, 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 um, and I know Erasmus was, was, was about running the uh, Creative Business Cup. And, and, uh, and Katrina is doing the wonderful days of impact. And then we were hit by this fantastic uh, disaster, whatever we call it, um, opportunity with the COVID-19 that we all had to cancel or, or, or set up. And then it was kind of quite, quite natural when we talked together and said, no, we wanna, we, we're going to do this here. And, and then uh, Rasmus said, oh, we, we could maybe do it together. And then I, I thought, OK, you know, and he said, there must be a million of, uh, not maybe not a million, but there must be a lot of different other organizations who have also canceled and they need to shine. And why don't we use the platform, create something where we let everybody shine? And, and this is basically it. Tomorrow we're definitely gonna shine, not us, but the 560 uh, nominees for the SDG Tech Awards, which is the largest sustainability award in the Nordics. But that's only one day. And by bringing everybody together, not only would we, would we shine, but we shine because our community is shining. And that's the thing. Well, listen, I'd like to say thank you to the three of you for actually making this physical event happen. I mean, I don't know if you can see on the cameras, but all the chairs are a long way away from each other. I've never been at an event in this building with so few people. Usually we're all squeezed in like sardines in a can. But um, and usually it's later in the evening and I've got an adult beverage. But this super kudos for actually reading the rules and seeing how to hold an event in these times that meets all the rules and it can be done safely and not being afraid and doing what 99% of all other events have done, which is canceled. Because the ideas and the companies and the organizations need to get out, need to meet, need to make the human connections face to face that just can't happen online, can't happen in isolation. Exactly. So thanks for making that happen Thank to you. all three of you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Right. Thanks.